chapter 11. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. the evidence of things not, not seen. Mm -hmm. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Yes. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Yes. Praise the Lord. Not things which are seen, that things which are seen were, were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaking. Mm. Yes. By faith, Enoch was translated mm -hmm. that he should not see death, Amen. and was not found, because God had translated him. But before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yes. I'm going to read one more verse. But without faith. That's right. Let me say that again. Come on. But without faith, yes. it is impossible yes. to please him. Yes. That's talking about God. You can't yes. please him without yes. faith. Yes. Yes. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. I pray for you six verses of Hebrews 11 chapter. Amen.
must unfold. Hear me now. Through my Father in heaven, I must bow down and repent. Repent. I must unfold. The hurt and the pain I have endured, my soul crawled, cried out. Through the fire and the flames, I must unfold now. Look right. Unfold. I must do this alone. Now unfold. Amen.
So we've been here a long time. We came here from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, my husband came because he was a scholar at the University of Florida. Um, he's a geographer and urban planner. Has been to Africa and done all kinds of research throughout the country and the world. He's been places I haven't been able to get to yet. But anyway, we're very thankful to be in God's house today and to be with my people, my people. And if we would stand and be who we are, yeah. we got so much to offer this yeah. world. Yeah. They've been pushed us to the side, but yeah. God is bringing us to the front. Yeah. And it's time for us to come yeah. and know who we are. Yeah. And the young people in here, I want you to be a part of what we are doing today. The first thing I want to mention to you, we have passed out bookmarks. Did everybody get a bookmark? If not, I have some more up front, and we can make sure you have one of those. Can I just hand those over to you? And you can just pass them out to those that don't have them. 
God is love. And we know he's love. We know because of his grace. If it wasn't for his grace, we wouldn't be here today. And I am so pleased with last night, I had an opportunity to go to the banquet Amen. and listen and hear the minister preach last night. Reverend Alfred Hicks, I believe it was, he was outstanding. And of course, he talked about God's grace and he talked about how we can be elevated. Amen. He talked about Romans from 11 and 6 and he talked about grace. Yes. And that's what we live on. Amen. His grace is sufficient. Yes. That's all all we need is grace and understand what it can do for us now and in the future. Now today I'm going to talk about you to, to you about the love of your history. Amen. The love of our history. Because we're all as one. And we all have the bookmark in front of us so we'll come to that in a few minutes. I am going to start by thanking the pastor and his wife for inviting me to come here today. Thank you so much, Brother Langdon. Thank you, Patricia. We really appreciate this opportunity. And I love this church. I like small churches. I like the feel of the church. Because I know some of these boards, if they could talk, they could tell us some history. Oh, because it was built in the 30s. I went back and looked at the history on the church. And it has been here ever since. It was started, of course, through the Church of God by faith. And we will talk a little bit about the Church of God by faith. And I went back to one of my books, and I had the first picture I sent in was the building for the first Church of God by faith. And this was over in Alachua, and, and the building had been closed. So I put it in to go in my book, and they put it listed as the first church. And who's standing out in front of that church was uh, Elder John Bright, who helped to charter the church in 1932. Church of God by faith. Amen. And this is my first picture in the book. My cover on my book, this book is sold worldwide, and it's in several languages. But the point of it is the picture on the cover is the one that they saw, selected. And this one was from 1943. And this was out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they chose this picture because it had women and women and men and others from the church. And so this is the cover on my major book. They've taken that cover off now because the book is sold. And so now to save money, they took the cover off and they couldn't get the rights to keep it, the cover picture. So it's plain. But there are many pictures in here, and I just wanted to let you know the Church of God by faith is one of my favorite, favorite churches. Of course, we've identified over 115 churches that had never been listed before. And we do that because we want people to know about our churches. We want to know our history. We are proud people. We've got a lot to offer this country. And so how are we going to get it out there? We have to tell it. We have to do oral history. And I'm very much involved in oral history. I see several of you in here today that I'd love to interview and sit down and have you talk about your stories. Because your stories pulled together will give us a way to share this information throughout the world. Yes, love your history. Amen. I'm going back to the Bible. Acts 2 and 4 brings in the Pentecostal movement, which we well know. And of course, it gave us an opportunity to come together and to speak in unknown tongues and go through the things that were necessary to make it known to the world that we were Pentecostals. Yes, we are Pentecostals. Yes, we are proud of being Pentecostals. Yes. It means that you are able to speak in glossolalia. It means speaking in unknown tongue. Amen. That's just one thing. You are able not only to do that, some of them can write in other languages. Amen. They can speak other languages. They can talk and you cannot understand what they're saying because they're speaking in a heavenly language. Amen. And you're standing right there and you don't know a word or what's going a way to get things across to people so that they understand and know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and when they should not do it. Amen. And this was so important during the time of slavery because so many of our people were able to get out of slavery. And it was the Holy Ghost that directed them. They knew the North Star. 
and they knew to go north. They didn't know the directions as we know it now, but they knew weather and they understood signs. And that's what we have to understand more of today. We see a lot of things going on, but we don't see the signs. But they had to know the signs. They knew the ground. They knew when they stepped on the ground what the ground meant to them. They knew if they went toward a certain tree, they could get something to eat. I mean, these are the types of history things that we have lost as a people. And they knew how to cook with nothing. They call it wet sauce and air pudding. Wind sauce and air pudding. Wind sauce, the wind coming in and air pudding. That meant you didn't have a thing to eat. But you found something through God's grace. You go around the lakes or whatever, and some of the kids would even just suck on a rock at night. They didn't have any food. Can you believe the salt in that rock and the minerals in that rock gave them enough strength to keep going the next day? These are some of the things that we have to understand that our people have gone through to get us where we are today. Your great, great, great grandparents and others have suffered, and we are suffering too. But we have to understand that there's a God. Yeah. And he is the one that opens the door and lets us know where to go and how to get there. Let's come back to 1865 and the bookmark. Yesterday was the 20th of May. Yesterday was Emancipation Proclamation Day. In, this, in the area of Alachua County, we served this from now through the 19th of June. And the 19th of June is Juneteenth. If you look on the back where it says Juneteenth, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued by President Abraham Lincoln on January 1st of 1863. 1863. It said, I didn't bring the proclamation to read it because it's too long. It said he has established that all enslaved people in Confederate states in rebellion against the Union shall be then, henceforth, and forever free. Florida enslaved people were read their proclamation, the Emancipation Proclamation. It was told to them by Union leader, Major General Edward Moody McCook. And this was done on May 20th of 1865. That's why May 20th is so important to us for the people in the state of Florida. That was two years after the signing, because they kept us working in the fields and so forth. We didn't know. And so we didn't get the word until 1865 in Tallahassee on the Knox porch that we were free people. And that meant that you would be able to move about and do other things, and you weren't confined to a plantation. Yes, now, if you turn over to the other side, it says May 20th through June 19th, yes. Now, this Union Army, uh, Gordon Granger, read to the people of Galveston, Texas, the general order, and it was number three, on June 19th of 1865. So they were freed in 1865, okay? 60, uh, 65, yes. And of course, we got the message uh, later. But then if you go down to 1866, it said the freedmen, these were what we call black African Americans and people who were freed. Uh, they were freed in Texas, and they organized the first annual celebration of the Jubilee Day. They call it Jubilee Day, and it was on June 19th. That's why June 19th means so much to us all over the world, not just in Texas, but everywhere. June 19th. And it was called Jubilee Day at that time. Now, in 1979, Texas became the first state to make Juneteenth an official holiday. Can we believe that, people? The first state out of all these states, the 48 states, the 50 states, or what have you, to make it an official holiday. Yes. Now, here in the state of Florida, we're still fighting the battle. 
to make it a Freedom Day. And we're saying freedom celebrations are from May the 20th to June 19th. Keep that in mind. Share it with your people. This is a bookmark. Stick it in your book and keep it. Put it in your Bibles and where you can keep knowledge of what has happened. Go home and read it. Put it on your uh, internet and, and find out more about what has happened as to where we are and where we're going forth. Yes, I want to move down just a little bit further and speak about some other things. In the early life here in the state of Florida, of course, we uh, had a religion to come in, but religion was already here. I'm saying we had the Pentecostal religion to come in. We had the Methodists, we had the Baptists, we had the Catholic, yes, we had all of these. And a lot of the religion could not be taught on the plantations. They had to go into what was known as bush arbors. You ever heard that term? Go into the woods. Yeah. Go deep into the woods. Take a pot down into those woods and turn the pot up so that the sound would go straight up and not so that the people could pe hear it uh, that were on the side. We had a way. Weren't we scientists? We knew how to save ourselves and get deep enough in those woods so that we could have our service and be with God and shout and do the other things that we needed to do to keep us going as a people, as a people in God's way. So yes, that was done. But then after those days were passed and the plantation life was changed, a lot of things happened to us. We went along a little bit further and we had a lot of lynchings. I'm gonna bring that in because it's important because Latua County was one of the largest counties for lynching, okay? And we're working toward making changes there. But one lynching I wanna share with you was in the 1900s, 1902. Mandy Price and Robert Suggs, these were two boys, lived in Half Moon, that's over near Newberry. Have you ever heard of Newberry? I know you are, some of you probably from Newberry. Those two boys were hung on, uh, in Jan and, I'm sorry, in uh, September of 1902. And they were listed in the paper as adults. We gotta know that the truth has never been told for our lives. They were children. He was, Mandy Price was nine and Robert Suggs was 11. Yes, these were children. Why were they hung? The, the lies have been told so many times. Some said that they were hung because it was late afternoon and they were coming in and that they had eaten a watermelon in the white man's field. Now that's one story. But the other story that came through with family and friends, and I'm kind of leaning toward that, is that they were passing a field and the cow had been killed and, some, and the meat had been taken out and whatever by white men, white boys. And so they saw these boys and they accused them. They were scapegoats. I don't know how else to put it. Yes. Scapegoats. And if you are a scapegoat, and at that time they took them, carried them from Half Moon over to Newberry, which was about five miles, and then they said, they, the posses got together and they hung those two boys. And that story is coming out now because in the newspapers it said that they were adults and that they were gun carrying guys and they were bad people in the community, had been up to Georgia, had caused problems up there. All of that was written in the papers. Now that's what I'm saying to you, so much of your history, you gotta get it done yourself. You gotta go back and go through those oral histories. Then you gotta justify what you have with the census records, with the WPA reports and other things to verify, cause they don't wanna believe you anyway. And I don't care if they don't believe us because the point of it is we know the truth now. Yeah, yeah. We know the truth because his mother got beat down there and she never walked straight again, hurt her hip and her back. The family's passed that history down. And she didn't live about eight or 10 years cause she was so sick from all the beatings that she took up there when those kids were getting hung. And then the daughter kept the story going. 
The daughter uh, lived to be 101 years old. She lived down in Tampa, Florida. And we were able to interview her in Tampa. But the first knowledge of that was at a church meeting. I went to a church meeting and they were talking about uh, atrocities that had happened to blacks. Mainly it was a women's meeting. It wasn't even a whole church with uh, men in it. And that purpose was to tell the story of some of the atrocities. This woman got up and said, I have witnessed a lynching. Well, Lord. And folks started looking and said, well, what is this? So this is supposed to be a church gathering. It is a church gathering. Uh -huh. And so she didn't say much more. I came on back to Gainesville. Never thought too much about it. But then when we were doing the research here out in the Dudley area, that story started coming up again. And then we found out that that lady down there in Tampa was the child that witnessed her brother's lynching. Oh, wow. Over years, through the family and oral history, your oral history is paramount, people. Yeah. You all know things about your families and so forth that you don't want to share. You need to share it. Yeah. Share it while you are breathing. Yeah. And you can tear those stories forward. Yeah. We checked what she, they, the family members said. We went back to the census. We followed it. We found out that they were children. That was the first thing. And folks said, oh, that wasn't so. You all just off track. No, it was true. Not only were they children, the, uh, both of them were lynched, yes. And the paper said there was a big mob, and they came and shot the bodies up and all of that kind of stuff. Yes, they did. They probably did. But what we knew, we were frightened. Over all these years, one lady I went to interview that knew the story, she wouldn't let me in her house. She said, you got to stay out on the, on, the, on the flat, on the porch out here, and I'll talk to you from in the house, because she was so scared. She said, when you leave, my dogs could get killed and everything else could happen, and you go home, and I got to live out here. I said, I understand you, ma'am. We stay outside, and you talk to us, and she gave us the history. She went back and gave names as the white farmers, the black farmers that knew about it, and gave us history that we could not have gotten otherwise. You see how important you all are? Yeah. You are yeah. extremely important yeah. to sharing the history of your life. Right. So I kind of uh, spent a few minutes there, but I wanted you to know that that is one story, and you can go back and see it. It is online. But let's move down to the Azusa Street. How many of you have ever heard of the Azusa Street movement? Hey, William Joseph Seymour, that's when, yes, we know that story. That happened in California. Yeah. 1906 and 1907, 1908 and 1909. Three years of church. Yeah. Never closed yeah. the door. 24-hour yeah. church. Can you believe that, people? 24-hour church sharing the word of God and people receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it spread it all over the country. Everybody eventually got a little bit of the Pentecostal movement. Of course, at Azusa Street, there was no segregation. Did you know that? White and black worshiped together. All kind of cultures came in there, the Spanish, the Indians, whoever, the Koreans, they all worshiped together. They spoke in different languages and some people could interpret their languages. This was the true baptism of the Holy Ghost coming into that area. Yes, they came and they stayed. And of course, during that time, churches were formed in many, many places. As we move forward, the churches, after they got the baptism and some of the men, members came in there, they decided to separate. We, we white. We don't need to be with you all. Uh, we're German. We don't need to be with you all. We'll give it to our people. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. And so the separation got worse and worse. You had Jim Crow already in place. And that just added to it. So even the churches that were integrated Many of those churches had to separate in the South because they were getting shot after they left church at night or they couldn't get home. And other things were happening to them. They were getting drowned. And these are people that had been in church. And so these were things, I mean, this is real. And so after they realized these things would happen, the black churches and the white churches started separating to save the lives of the people. Yeah. Yes, yes, that was the way that it had to go in order to make a way. But let's come down again to the Church of God by Faith. It was founded in 1914. 
1914. It has been over 100 years ago. Yeah. And as that church was founded in this area, there were many, many people who were saved and baptized under the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Some of them were Methodists, had been Methodists, some were Baptists. But once they received the touch, the almighty touch that man can't give us, they were in there. Yeah. They knew how to spread the word. They had very little. Money was not important. The point of it was the spirit. We have a spirit in us people, and that spirit is strong. It keeps us alive. It saved a lot of lives over the years. Just knowing when to shut your mouth, look, go the other way, and act like you got some sense to survive. Survival is the Holy Spirit. It has been the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit today, and it will always be our means of survival. It means if you got to get down on your knees and stay and pray and ask God to direct you, go there. Amen. Give God that time and he will direct your path Amen. in time. I won't say he'll do it right that second, but he will direct your path and he will help other family members and friends in your family to go in the right direction if you give God that opportunity. Yes, the Church of God by Faith was founded. I mentioned that it was already founded here in 1914, but we have this church, and this church was one of the first churches, the Church of God by Faith. And I love this building. It is just simply personal. I just wish you could talk and tell us some of the things that have happened in this building over the years and the many times that people have felt the baptism. I do have the uh, information from uh, Bishop McKnight. How many of you knew this man? Uh-huh, I did too. Amen. Yes. So I, I was able to get that and read the information. And of course, they had a bookmark. So that's why I push bookmarks all the time. Because if you got a bookmark, you're going to stick it in your Bible. You're going to stick it in somewhere that you're going to keep it. Amen. And then you can look at it at any time and learn your history on it. And there's a lot of history on here. Of course, it had on here Jim Legacy on the back. I like that. And they put the 23rd Psalm on the opposite side. So yes, we had the Church of God by faith. Then that was 1914. But in 1915, that next year, we had the Birth of the Nations film. Have you ever heard of that film? Yes. Oh, yes, you have. I know you have, because it changed so much in this country. Yes. We were already struggling with Jim Crow. And when that Birth of the Nation came out and it went to the White House and everywhere else, it made it much worse for people. And so that happened in 1915, and of course we suffered. You had World War I, I know many of you have heard that, of course, in the World War I, our church services mainly in the South and so forth were in tent meetings. We didn't have it in a church like this. This church wasn't built until the 30s. So we were tent meeting. We were bush arbors in the woods, around the lakes, or wherever we could go to have God's services. Yeah. But as time moved on from that, after the birth of the nation and the churches were meeting, and of course World War I, and then when our men came back from Paris and other places that had participated in the war, they were treated like dogs. Amen. They took their pins off of them and whatever, and took the uniforms and made them as they call it, colored again. And they were always colored. But we have to remember that that was a part of history that we have to remember and live that. Now we lived through World War I, we got to World War II, and then in World War II, our churches were picking up because we were getting buildings. But then some of us were doing so well, we had camp meetings. We had places where people could go in the summer and enjoy. And then the government took some of those because they needed them for the military. And there's nothing you could do about it. So it closed and pushed the churches again into a strange location. But that did not last. After World War II was over, they did give them back most of their campsites. And that was good because our youth needed somewhere to go and they needed some place to be involved. But 
During that time in the 30s, the churches really became organized. The staffs be got in place. You got not only your bishops and your missionaries, but you had missionaries traveling overseas and going other places. The churches were, were as they said, getting a footing, if you can understand. And that footing was a strong footing because our Pentecostal people did not back down. And they haven't done so today, especially when it comes to things related to their people. So that was very strong during that time. And of course, in the 40s, after the, uh, World War II, you had other military needs. These people came back from World War II, and they couldn't get housing. Right. Yeah, what happened? Wow. Well, the housing was available for the whites, yeah. but it was not available for the Negroes. And they had fought in those wars just like everybody else. But they could not get places to live. This was in the 40s and the early 50s. But then in the 50s, the civil rights movement hit ahead again. And you had what was known as the sanitation strike out in um, um, Memphis. Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee. Also, you had other activities going on that were really terrible. But the Church of God in Christ, which is another church that I do a lot of research on, was able to provide services for these men. They ate there, and of course, you know, Martin Luther King gave his last speech at the Church of God in Christ in 1968 on the 3rd of April. And that is very significant because it shows how we have kept our hands in the area of helping our people. Not just helping them occasionally, but keeping an eye on what is needed. So every one of you in here, you got your pastor and your pastor's wife, both of them are pastors. They look out for you. They are your shepherds. Yes. And this is what has been so strong in our churches. Yes. If we did not have good people that, was, right. that were interested in making sure your needs were met and sending Brother Jones to help Brother Sue uh, and her family who didn't have a husband there right there, doing things to help the children in your community. This is what the church is all about. It is to look out for its people, not occasionally, but every day. And we pray, we pray you have your prayer meetings. And what I love are your testimony meetings. I used to love to go to churches for testimony so I could hear and understand what they were doing in the communities. Mm -hmm. And another thing I think we have lost is the foot washing. Do you all do foot washing? Oh, you all do foot washing? Oh, I love going to foot washing because it is a precious thing that you can reach down and wash somebody's feet and, and feel that you are not above anybody else. God is a helper. He knows what to do. And then you get there and then you wipe that person's feet and, and feel and then put those prayers in there with it to help them. That is something I need to see more of in our churches. But I'm so pleased that you all are doing it. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. But there are so many things, like I said, the testimony services and so forth have been very, very helpful. But then as we move down, I talk in terms of community engagement. Because we are engaged in our community in every step of what has to go on. You give each other rides to work in the morning. You make sure they got groceries in their house. Yes. This is stuff that some cultures don't even have to worry about because they got the dollars behind it. Amen. But because we have and have not, we know how to help each other Amen. and bring us on board yes. so that we can move forward in God's name because he's the one that gives all the needs. Now here in the area of Gainesville, Florida, we've done quite a bit of research on Seminary Lane and we've not had some of the results that we wanted because a lot of that land has gone to gentrification. Yeah. Yeah. And we can't get it back. And they pay these people peanuts 
to take their land and they can't even buy a good uh, place to live anymore. And that's where we need our churches to band together and stand for their community people. And then go to these meetings that we have, our city commission meetings and so forth. Be a part of it. Let them know that you're there and that you're representing your community. And they'll try to ignore you, but don't allow it. Because you're a citizen paying taxes just like everybody else. And you deserve the best, yes. not the second best, because we're considered second and third citizens. Uh-uh, we don't go there. We are number one. We are God's children. We stand high, and we look at the situations. We know we're not sick and crazy, as some try to say. We are God's people. And when you are at the top, and when you are God's people, you can't drop us down here. You might try to drop us down here, but we come in here to a service like this and it lifts you back up. It carries you back up. It keeps you going during the week. It helps you to understand all these laws that are not even for us, against us. <coughs> but God is there. I want you to know <coughs> that with the gentrification in the Gainesville area, they're setting up, of course, you know, the bike paths and everything is related to campus. But we do still have Black Lives Matter. And it means a lot. Black Lives Matter came into activity during the Trayvon Martin case down in Sanford, Florida. I went down there in March and it was something to see. Knowing that the people were there for the family of Trayvon Martin. And I'll tell you one other thing, too, that night they were there, the stage almost fell down. They had so many people on the stage, and it reminded me of the Azusa Street Movement. Ooh. Because on the Azusa Street Movement, the porch gave way. It yes, it did, because there were so many people out there on Bonnie Bray trying to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so when I was down there in Sanford and that stage started rocking, I said, oh my God, that reminds me of Azusa Street, because that was the same thing that happened there. But in any case, Black Lives Matter has picked up, and that term is still available to us today. But what we need to know is that our people are making in progress. And I have here the mayor of Chicago, the new mayor of Chicago that's getting ready to come in. His name is uh, Brandon Johnson. He's from the Church of God in Christ. He's black. And we got to say that God is answering prayer. When you look at the mayor of New York, his name is Eric Adams. Church of God in Christ. Pentecostal people. Pentecostal. You we are coming out. It doesn't look like it to some, but it is. We are getting in key positions. We are educating our people. We are educating our youth. We are listening. And above all, we are praying. Nothing gets done if the word doesn't go up and up and out into the heavens. Because it will come back in a way that it will be serviceable to our needs. So we have to remember those two names. Another name I put down was Al Shopton. Yes, he has Politics Nation, but he has also other programs that are very supportive of African Americans. But then I want to go back and give you a name that you may not have heard before. And this is, her last name is uh, Alexander. Sister Alexander was in Holmes, Mississippi, during the time of segregation, all right? Now, the school that they had was leaking. The windows, one or two of them had opened and couldn't close them. It was, the school was in bad shape. It was falling down. And they applied at Holmes County to say the federal government has promised to give us decent schools, a place for our youth to come to. Well, she filed the bill, and of course, in 1970, schools had to be integrated because it went to the Supreme Court. Yeah. And the Supreme Court said in 1955, when you had Brown versus the Board of Education, that was when schools were to have been integrated. And they played around and would not integrate 
all these, those years, but they had to integrate because the federal government was taking the money away from them. Right. That is how we got integration. That's how they ended up closing up Lincoln and some of our other schools, yeah. uh, making them middle schools or what have you. But prior to that, you know, there was nothing for us. And so with that integration, we were able to get sometimes better schools. It hurt us in one way, but it helped us in another way. Yes. And that came out of the Pentecostal churches, people. You, Prayers and people asking for change, for change, for change. And these changes are slow, but these changes are sure to help us, to keep us going in the future. Now, I need to say in sharing our history, Yes, oral history interviews are very, very important. And if any of you would like to be interviewed and you let us know, oral history at the University of Florida, I work with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program as a volunteer. And I like being a volunteer because I'm retired. I can go home when I need to. I don't have to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning. I can do what I need to do. And we have the program being taped today and it's gonna go in the oral history program. So you all will be able to go to YouTube and listen to what has happened here today. And this is history because so many people throughout the world listen to these oral history programs and interviews. So we would wish to thank Deborah Hendricks, who is our uh, photographer today. She's there all quiet. Deborah Hendricks is in charge of the area for oral history that does the videotaping and so forth. And we have Mr. Clayton, Clayton photographer. Mr. Clayton, stand up. He is from Melrose, Florida. He travels with us and we go a lot of places doing uh, pictures and saving our history. We've been doing it for several years and folks have to come back to us and when other family members pass, well, do y'all have anything on what happened when y'all did our suit? Yes. And then we can pull it out and they can show it. They carry it to the funeral homes and show it, they do whatever. But then a lot of it has been used for legal things too. We had land over here. When, when did y'all have any land? They go get the record and find it. And it was there. And it was on the oral history interview. You wouldn't have known about it. Amen. If that grandmother hadn't said where they had that land and gave the, the conduits as the best she could remember. And when you go back and we do the research on it and find it, many things are true. I would say 99% of what people say is true. Other than when they're mad with a family member and they want to throw off at them a little bit. We get that too. But we have to get past that. This is time to tell the truth. It's time to put your history up front where others will be able to use it. Now, we are also doing another program down in Lake County with the Rosenwald schools. You know, these were the early schools that were built for African Americans. They had to match the money, and the Rosenwalds had the money, and they matched it, and we got those early schools. We have one right here in Gainesville, out near Santa Fe. Somebody knows where it is. And so, that's right, that's right. And so we have some of those things in our community. We're trying to make sure we get oral history from all the people that attended that they didn't attend, but their great-grandparents attended. And we're trying to save that history. We're working with Indians, and we have other projects that are going on dealing with the Underground Railroad. Oh, that is serious business, people. Very, very serious. Finding out how these people bridged and got from one location to another. Because a lot of it hadn't been told. The half has not been told. And so this, again, is another project that we are presently working on. But I want to thank you today for giving me the opportunity to speak to you and to bring you up to date on what we are doing and what we would like to continue to do. I work with the Holiness Pentecostal Movement. We have an organization. Uh, called the um, <clears throat> Holiness Pentecostal Center. And what we do here in Gainesville, we serve as a person, you send us a question and we direct it. We'll direct it to where we can get history and information. We got a question the other day and this is, I will share this one more story with you. Uh, we had a case down here in Florida. The man's name was Oscar Mack. 
and this was in 1922, Oscar Mack was accused of killing two white men. He did, and we think he did. And he did it to save his life. Well, after he killed them, he got away. And that was unusual too. Because usually a black man is called, you know, they hang him. Some of them said he was put in the water out there, whatever. But Oscar Mack got away. Oscar Mack changed his name several times, five or six times. He worked in New York, New Jersey, ended up out in Ohio. He had a wife. He had children. Oscar Mack died in 1960 under one of his alias names, Johnson. He had children. Now, this is a story, again, if it had been for oral history, white and black. Because the white lady that we interviewed, her relative was killed. He was a Klansman. But she told the story based on what family members had shared. We had several black people in Daytona and other parts of the country that knew Oscar Mack, but his changed names as he went along. But the key thing I got to share with y'all, he was Pentecostal. And we found that he was baptized in the Holy Ghost, filled with the Spirit, and lived a Pentecostal life. Now you know God is in the plan, and we have helped so many of our people. We have helped them, we've hid them, we've kept them safe. We have worked to make the Pentecostal movement a strong movement, along with the other church denominations. I don't leave them out. But we are special. We are special because we're served, called underserved people. We don't, they don't care about us. They call you underserved. You're not receiving the needs that you, others receive. But you got to have the same needs met every day. You got to eat every day just like other folks. You need good housing every day just like everybody else. You need your kids to get a good education. And that is paramount. If they don't have a good education, they can't make it out here with some of these activities because they keep us out. And so encourage your kids to read. Encourage this church and other churches, maybe even to have to bring books in here and have them available for the kids. Because what's going on here in the state of Florida right now is terrible. I'm a librarian, and then my friends are telling me they're taking books out by the, the, the truckload. Not only are they taking them out, the other part that you don't know, they're counting to an area, and they are selling them. And those that, that don't sell, they're taking them and putting them into other formats and making money on them. Getting rid of the books. Getting rid of our books. And she was telling me, she was showing me uh, some uh, information about how many hundreds and hundreds, I say hundreds, it was really thousands, of books that have gone in. And those books are no more because they have turned them into paper or into other products to be used. We can't get those books back. We got to save our history as best we can. So those are the parts they don't tell you. They making money off and getting rid of our materials and putting it back to us in a different format. Yes, I'm thankful for today. And yes, I need to say to you that God is good. He gives us the strength to move forward. He is going to give us the grace that we need to understand what we have to do to make our lives better. I wish to thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. I have one more thing that I'd like to do. Uh, sister and brother, let me please come forward. I want to give you this book. And this is on the state of Florida. And it's arranged by counties in the state of Florida. So you can go to your county and see what has been included. And I want to sign it. I did not get to sign it. And I want the people in the church to sign it. So when you carry that book home, you're going to have 80 and 90 signatures on that book here for this occasion. Yes, so we want to pass it around. And I'll give you a pen. I want everybody in here to sign their book yes. so that they will keep it as a memento. And I can help you to get another copy that you can share with the people in the church. All right. All right. Thank you so much. God bless you.
Okay. Amen. Come on and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. For our minister Sherry Dupree. Amen. Hallelujah.
when they put the paper of the people in the commissioner, those people said this was a store what? on this corner. Mm -hmm. oh. They said this was a store on this corner. That means that they could tear it down. They was new. They were 30 years old. They don't know nothing. That's right. We sell for whatever somebody tells us. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. Amen, amen. Yes, right, that's right. It's not only his story, but it's our story. It's our story. Amen, amen. We got some land that we just give it away. Amen. We two stages to invest in what you need to be Nothing now, that's right. The money he got, he went crackhead on. Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Got nothing. Mm-hmm. So I, I get beside myself. When I no, you're that. telling the truth. I you're telling the truth. I love my senior mothers, my senior. I love to be under them. I love to hear the old stories. Amen. 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 I love it. Amen. Amen. I love it. He was last night when my senior mothers and them oh, and the other Amen. 
is all in his time. Yes, yes, yes. Good God. Yes. Amen. So some people say, just give a little time. Amen. They'll fall. Just give a little time. Oh They'll close the church. It's just give them a little time. Uh, Amen. Yeah, yeah. But when you got praying people That's right. praying for you, yeah. when you got praying people yeah. holding you up, yeah. when you got praying people, right. it makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, there's more with us than against us. Amen. You got to understand there's more on your side yeah. than them that are talking about you. Yeah. Than them that are trying to kill you. Yeah. Than them that are trying to lie on you. There's more with you yeah. than against you. Yeah. To God be the glory. Yeah. And this wouldn't be possible without my wife. Yeah. It would have been possible. Amen. Amen. I have to get honor with honest you. Amen. Amen. She held me up. She encouraged me. She supported me. It was not easy traveling up and down that road for 18 years. Going to libel and working. Right. It wasn't easy. Oh. But God. Yeah. But God. Yeah. See, everything is about timing. Uh -huh. So when God told me it was time for me to leave that, God had this building already prepared yeah. for yeah. us. A lot of people wanted it. A lot of people still mad about it. But they didn't get it. But God, when you be faithful to God, he'll be faithful to you. Amen. To God be the glory. I'm happy about what the Lord has done. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. 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 And I thank God, amen, for our spiritual mother amen. being us. Amen. amen. Come on, stand up, Pastor. Amen. Overseer, Pastor President. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on, give my hand. us under her wings as her children praying for us. Praying for us. Praying for us. Praying for us. Yeah. Praying for us. Yeah. Praying for us. Yeah. I give honor to him because truly he's the head of my life. And I'm thinking praise God for you. For you. And I know she gave me one night and it freaked my heart. Because, see, I was going through it that time. And I was forgetting everything. But God had restored. Thank you. Jesus! Hey! Jesus! But we find a stenosis is kind of hard to walk without support. But I said, God, I'm still walking. Even though I have to have support. Even how, yes, sir, Jesus. I told him this morning I'm waiting on my last shuffle. Because I'm going to shuffle again. Glory. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you. But I needed, I want him when you brought the invitation to me. And I saw her name on there. I never heard her minister before, but she worked in the library as a librarian, and I was at the 
telecommunication at Santa Fe. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I remember your son. And your husband, you introduced me to the, I can't remember where it was, but we was on our, outside of a store somewhere or another we was. But I think, did your son work at Publix? Yes, he still does. Oh, glory. Amelia works at Publix, that's right. And, and we were standing there, and I don't know what, we met, and she, and she introduced us. Uh -huh. And we talking, and last night I said, Sherry, don't no, me, Sherry, you remember me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I won't forget you. Mm. God. And Trinita and all of them. Yes. See, I won't forget. Uh -huh. But I, some things I did forget, but God restored. Yes. Yeah. 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 When you have coma and survive, yeah. Yeah. it's going to leave something. Yeah. You're going to have a, you going to, you got enough left that say I had. And I thank God that He brought me out. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God because I went in the house for twice in 20. Twist in, 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 <laughs> And come home. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. But so many never came out. And I thank God. Thank you. Now. And now, you know, I hope you <coughs> thank you. I thank God. I'm just, I'm just yeah. 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 Live oak, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I can see the sign. Yeah. 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 Mm. He would come and visit with us and we would go and visit with them. Yeah. But I can see the sign. Mm -hmm. When God said, huh. go. So it was ready to go. Yeah. It was silent. Because you see, you done put your time in. Yeah. 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 You done put your time in and somebody said, you know what? I've been over there. I done did that. But if you ever hear the word, oh, right. come on now. <laughs> if you ever really hear the word, come on now. You don't matter where it come from. Uh -huh. Harden not your heart. That's yes. right. Hey. And see, some people begin to harden their heart. Yeah. Because the good word wasn't the word, you wasn't you were pooping and ripping and running all the time. All but right. see, teaching, right. see, they teach you. All right. Get in the ear. All right. And bring the word. That's an awesome word today. Mm -hmm. I was glad because in my children, they have, we're having church in Ocala. Church of the Living God in Christ, New Life Ministry. Mm -hmm. It's having. Youth today with the youth in Ocala. And I said, Well, I'm going to hear. I'm going to say, Pastor Sharon. Amen. <laughs> Amen. They all gone. Uh, but I, I'm going to be here. Amen. I said, Because I never heard before. Uh, and we were together. I didn't even know she was pastoring or minister or carrying the word. But I said, God, I'm going to hear today. And I'm glad. You, and, and, and think about it history. Yeah. yeah. What do yeah. you think the Bible yeah. is? Yeah. See, God allowed me to see. <laughs> see, that was baby that brought him to give me a hug before they left. That was my fifth generation. Ooh. Ooh. Jesus. Glory. Amen. Glory. Amen. I thank God. Yes. And I got a chance to Well, I call him my other son. <laughs> grandson. <laughs> oh, did he wake up today? <laughs> and those my great friends on the people and 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 come. Those are my great friends. Great oh, man. I can. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Glory. Uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. This is a love offering from the church in Ohio. Amen. Thank you, Amen. 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 We didn't ask for set money. So now I didn't get a chance to take it out there. <laughs> Most times I ask for set money, everybody don't come to my send something. Uh -huh. So my daughter is the pastor. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Oh, keep on, keep it on. And, and every time I come, something I change. It's, it's you. <laughs> it's just you. And when you when you pass by, I'm quite sure lots of people pass by and look up. It ain't good enough. But when God gets in there and makes us some stuff, you better that's say it. Right. And then, oh, something else has been done since I've been here. And so I have not been coming and and, 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 and but I have been I been going no place at that. Amen. I think I've been it's been three years since I had an agent. Mm. But I say God is good. And there have been times when I couldn't even get out of bed by myself. Praise God. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for this opportunity to be with this group today, Amen. to share God's word yes. and let it go into our hearts, Lord, and make us stronger so we'll know how to think. Know that the Holy Spirit is what guides us from day to day and keeps us standing in all our ways. Now may the God give us the strength to go forward. And we close and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have done. And may the uh, uh, Spirit of the Lord go with us and guide us yes. now, henceforth, and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you. 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 Th